The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 9th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating. To you and I, just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got you covered. Just send me an email. Let those fingers do the walking. Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tigers, then any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow down 166 points. That's off six-tenths of a percent. The leader percentage-wise, the downside is the transports off almost eight tenths of a percent, 84 points. Uh, semis are down uh, about, uh, well, I take that back. Semis are the leader percentage-wise. They're down nearly one full percentage point, nearly 14 points. The S&P is off 13. NASDAQ off 16. Spot volatility is still below its 50-day exponential moving average, but up by 61 pennies or four and about four and a half percent. Gold's up seven bucks. Silver up um, a penny out here silver yeah just a penny and light sweet crude trading off 33 cents at 64 bucks even steven the big uh, movers and shakers are to the upside ferro technology up eight bucks uh, cerner corp up 560 okta 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 okay ta or ta uh, whichever you prefer that's up nearly five dollars or five percent uh Mangada, boo, you figure that one out mdb is a ticker symbol that's up 460 facebook up 388 the shakers to the downside zogenics off 12 dollars or 24 percent on seven and a half million shares so far today novartis is off 11 bucks or nearly 12 percent pool corporation down nearly five percent or eight buck rooney so certainly stocks to look at i want to look at what you want to look at no requests thus far so let's go take a look at the markets and get a feel for what they're doing if we turn over and take a look at our daily equity futures contracts out here what we're going to notice is that the es mini right now right this very second is attempting to form a new profile won't have confirmation of it really until manana but it does look relatively solid you can see you've got an orange looking bar now you're looking at the very left hand panel of the chart it shows an a to b equals cd pattern that uh, is still underway out here um, that would take price into about the 29 28 level well let's get back to the current uh, profiles out here so the top of this box is 28.92 the uh, bottom of the box is 28.60 the center of 28.76 it's probably easier for you to see if we do this here let's do this here now you can see both the daily and the left hand this is the es mini just switch to a different uh, view of the uh, charts. ES Mini in the upper left. Well, ES Mini on all the panels. It is the daily in the upper left. It is the weekly in the upper right. It is the monthly in the lower left. It is the quarterly time frame in the lower right. Going from lower right, we can see that the ES Mini is trading into resistance, the top of that quarterly profile. 
2885, we're 2886. What's the top of the monthly profile? 2892, we've been up there. Right now, again, we're trading at 2886. Two levels of resistance have been tested. On a weekly basis, support is going to be old resistance. That's 2822. Now, 2822, well below the bottom of the daily box out there, 2860. 2860 becomes the first downside target. To close below that, what you would anticipate is that 2822 level. Are we going to see that happen? I don't know. We know that there's no way there's going to be a change in trend until there is a close below support. Ultimate support now, assuming this profile in fact solidifies and forms overnight, is 2860. But that's what's in place right now. The beauty is we've got another piece of information to go with in order to be able to identify whether there's just a retracement back to support or whether or and and potentially look at close above 2892, now the top of the daily box. 2892, as we know, is the top of the monthly profile out there. You close over both of those, you probably move up to the rising trend line. That's just simply taking the high. This is the S&P 500, really the ES mini, but you do the same thing. The January 1st high, as well as the September 1st high. And so breakouts above that 2992 this month in the month of April, the most positive month that there is on the planet for the uh, stock indices, historically speaking, that is, would take you into that three thousand level out there but right now ps day resistance is resistance out there now if we go ahead and we put that together with the uh, daily time frame chart and we do our a little tom to mark setup count out here we're going to see that today as long as it closes above the close from bar number five that's labeled on my screen that price by the way a lot of that day by the way let's do this the day is uh, april the third the close on april the third was 2879 as long as there's a close about 2879 then you've got a nine count with yesterday potentially well was yesterday the high I don't know if it was yesterday or today, but what you can also see out here is you can see that price right now is just testing Stevie's green line. Price stays above that, then there's really nothing wrong with the ES Mini. Not that there's anything wrong with it as we speak, but what we're looking for here are potential topping signals. Again, the confirmation would not come. You don't see that new profile in here because it's trying to form, and it's utilized, utilizing one of my other uh, early, early super Doppler tools um, that's being applied here. Now, the ES Mini and the Dow are the only ones with new daily profiles for us to look at. Let's just do this here. Let's put the uh, Dow up on my screen. That way it makes it Dow Equity Futures contract makes it a little bit easier for you to see. So here is the daily profile, the key level inside the YM 26017. A close below that would suggest a change in trend, a test and rejection of that. Mm. No dice. You've got the Dow Equity Futures contract above the top of their monthly profile. The top of that box is 25928. Prices above the top of the weekly profile and prices above the top of the quarterly profile. So the Dow, to the downside, has work that it needs to do if it's going to convert you from a bull to a bear. And that ain't no bull. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's finish off the equity markets out here. Uh, that means taking a look at the NQ and the Russell 2000. Now, the Russell 2000, the very right-hand panel of my screen, you can see that the uh, bar color has turned that uh, bright gold. Uh, but at this stage here, I don't have a new profile on any tool that I use to identify where those new levels of support or resistance might be. All we know at this stage of the game is prices back below the uh, top, which is 1577.70. That's a daily time frame out there. It says price could easily go target 1553. Nothing new on the NQ, but let's go over to our other charts and understand other areas of support or resistance or any other patterns going on out there. And in the case of the Russell 2000, we could see that thus far today, the pullback has been nothing more than a test of support, Stevie's green line. That that exact number I'm sure somebody might like it out there and I would like to give it to you I just need to go find a data box where did I put that data box here it is let me get a cursor out here and then I'll give you what that total is 1570 70 is the number if price does not uh, close below that today was nothing more than a test of excuse me a test of support inside the Russell 2000. Now, of course, I'm using support and we're using, excuse, boy, oh boy, we're using both profiles, market profiles, that is, black gold, Texas T, as well as using um, uh, Stevie's uh, red and green line out there. Speaking of Stevie's green line, if we take a look at the NQ, today has been nothing more than a test of that as well. The exact number for that, and you'd want to watch this, is 7593. 75.93, if we see a close below that, well, then not only do you have a confirmed roads momentum indicator top signal because of today's bearish engulfing candle that could unfold and a move back below Stevie's green line, that says here further retracement to come. 
Where is that further retracement to come? Now, that's a great question out there. And what we've entered into the mix out here are the quarterly profiles because price inside the NQ is above that. So 7505 near 7601, that's about 100 points, um, pretty good math, huh? And uh, that would become another, that would become a level of support, or 7444, that would be the top of the daily box out there. But at this stage of the game, uh, it's still mean and green, long and strong, with uh, the markets doing nothing more than testing support. Now, I think that by the end of the day, we're going to have a clearer picture. You might say, how could you say that? Well, the one way to be able to express that to you is take a look at what went on this morning, what has transpired here. If we just take a look at a shorter term time frame, that's a 30 minute time frame for the ES mini. What you're going to see out here is a perfect butterfly buy pattern. We can see the 1.272 expansion. That's between swing points. That's a swing point from 10 a.m. That is 10 a.m. from back, uh, looks like maybe yesterday, uh, is April the 8th, all the way down to the low at 10 a.m. What is the magic with 10 a.m.? This is something to think about. But uh, that con confirmation didn't come until 10.30 until we had that little piercing candle out here. Now, all butterfly or Gartley patterns have got at least five different potential outcomes out here. Uh, right now, what we know is resistance inside of the ES Mini on a 30-minute time frame was the top of that 30-minute profile. That was at 28.90. Did price get above that? Yes, but by the close, it was back below that area. Now it is a bearish structured box out here. So it's had the counter trend rally. The question is, will price take out support? Support is not really the low of today. If we take a look at market profiles, which is uh, looks like about 2880, it would be 2881, let's call it 2881.50, the bottom of that profile. So we're starting this. We know that Price couldn't take out resistance on the ES Mini, the top of that box out there. So now we're going to find out whether or not price is going to be able to hold support. It's possible another profile is going to form. It's 122. Maybe one forms at 130. Maybe it's 2 o'clock. Maybe neither of those time frames. But at this stage here, you had your bottoming pattern. You had your counter trend rally up to resistance. Resistance is held. Let's see whether or not support holds. That's why I say we may have a better idea at the end of the trading session. We have that same pattern out there, I think, in a few of the uh, instruments. The NQ, did it do it? Well, the NQ stronger than the ES. What I mean by stronger, it performed a Gartley instead of a butterfly. Even though sometimes I get butterflies in my stomach. Here you've got the old Gartley pattern. Now, in this case, price was able to make a move above the top of that profile, which was 76.10. Uh, but we're back inside it right now. 75.87 is going to be the level to be watching. If there's a move below that, uh, then we could be looking at a market that wants to close at the low of the trading session out here. No such pattern inside of the Dow. Now, the Dow was certainly making an A to B equals CD to the downside. That price projection was 26.092. Uh, as it was moving down there, we did not see the bullish reversal signal. Instead, this is a 30-minute chart, so we're just looking at 30-minute time frame charts right now just to kind of get a gauge, a feel for how the market is communicating to you and I. Here, if we take a look at the bounce, though, inside of the Dow, no bullish reversal signal here. Nonetheless, it was was led higher by the NQ, by the ES Mini, or just on its own. But either way, what price did was a tested resistance, the top of that profile, 26,220. Now, when we look at this stuff on the uh, short-term time frame, and we see price moves up, finds resistance at those profiles, it's why these profiles are so important to you and I. It's why Jay wants to know if there's new profiles out there, uh, because it can assist you with regard to, hey, is this just your vanilla uh, or chocolate type of retracement, or is this maybe, uh, you know, one with filled with nuts uh, from a Sunday standpoint out there? And uh, we don't have that answer. Now, the level of support on a 30-minute basis here for the Dow would be 26,127. If we look at the Russell 2000, let's go see what pattern it formed, if any, 
on a 30-minute time frame. Nothing more than the A to B equals CD, which would have turned this into a Gartley buy pattern. Um, I didn't draw that in, but you can see the one-to-one -one at 15.70. You can see the bullish reversal signal where it had priced stopped the top of its bearish structured box, 15.78.80. So now the key question is 15.71.50. Will that hold as support? And there, my friends and foes, uh, are your equity futures markets. We had a request to go take a look at uh, Goldilocks, maybe some of the gold equities out there as well. If we do take a look at gold, we put this chart, it is on a, a daily time frame. Here's what we're going to see. By the way, we got a gold request from Peter in the den, and we also have that from Bill. Bill H. Uh, wants to uh, take a look, at, get some latest analysis on the gold contract. And uh, so let's do this for, for everyone in the listening audience. Now, if we take a look at gold, trade out at 13.0810, uh, what does that mean, jelly bean? Well, what it means is that right now it's trading above the top of its daily profile. So here, what we're going to see on the June contract is both the daily, which is at 13.06 even, Stephen, out here and that's a key level and bill was asking or wondering whether or not price is going to in essence close above us uh, uh, resistance out here right now right here right now the answer is well i don't know if it's going to close above it but it's your trading above it 1306 what does that mean well you know you break above resistance you head to the next resistance level which would be 1335.70 inside of gold Let's go look at those mining equities we get back from the spring. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we were looking at gold before we went into that break, and uh, Bill, who wrote in, uh, specifically was looking at the five-hour time frame. And uh, the five-hour time frame chart has really been generating great signals uh, for Goldilocks, uh, and it's using all of them. Uh, it's using, for example, here up at the high, we had that Tommy to market, Tommy to market, Tommy to mark set up nine count pattern out here. Bar number eight was the high. That's not unusual, eight, nine, or the bar following bar nine. Uh, when price goes ahead and makes its uh, bottom out here on the five hour time frame, does with wave number seven, that's letter G, as part of the Chapman wave, but it's not the Chapman wave, and you need to learn the Chapman wave and all the tools that are incorporated in that. That's not what you see on the screen here, but we do like how the markets do sing in the key of G. And when it does, you pay attention to it because that can be where you see it turn. Price is also pushing lower, doing less relative energy. The cavalry arrives, creates that piercing candle, marks the bottom. You may remember we were taping the show that morning between 8 and 9 out there. And, and as price was pushing lower and things looked bad, uh, what I was saying, not so fast. Notice that price is moving lower doing less relative energy. Notice that we are in wave number seven. We didn't know on a five-hour basis because it was being taped between eight and nine whether that was going to be that nine o'clock bar was going to be that seventh wave. But by two o'clock, the answer was yes when that next bar formed out there. That has identified the low. What Bill was pointing out was that price right now is trading above the top of the five-hour profile. And that's true. It closed above it at nine o'clock this morning. As we speak right now, it is retesting that level. It's really close to the 1308 level looks like 1307.90 is the uh, number we're in wave number three letter c uh, to the upside out here uh, but one thing bill that you and i have to pay attention to and notice is that at that nine o'clock session as the uh, gold contract on a five hour time frame was pushing through resistance we can see that our red line turned green with envy and what that means is that over the period of the next many hours it's a five-hour chart this could take a couple it could take a day or two uh, but what we know is there's a phenomena that uh, suggests that we should see Stevie's green line right now and price catch up to each other what Bill and I and you don't know is it going to happen because gold moves sideways and the line moves higher out there is it because we're going to see price pull back to test that line while the line in essence remains stationary by the way that level is 1301 i don't know the answer to that question i'm good i'm not that good i just don't know but what we do know uh, bill is that when we see a test of that line and price if price bounces off of that assuming there's no other topping signal out there which there isn't at the moment that would be a bullish test likewise if price were to close below that that would uh, say uh okay What's your other message out there? We'd have to take a look at that at that point in time. But so far, so good. Just anticipate that over the coming day or so, we should see those two things connect. Assuming I can say that. Well, I just did. Now, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here and we look at Stevie's red line, it's a beautiful thing. Because price is above that, above the top of the uh, daily profile, all suggesting that price should make its way back to its previous swing points out here. Previous swing points being the March 25th, 26th area out here in the 13th. 30 ish type range. So at this stage, everything looks pretty good, right? Wrong. Actually, it looks pretty good. But now the question is, well, we know the correlation, directionally speaking, between gold and uh, the mining equities out here. Why are all the mining equities on my screen, with the exception of uh, Barrick Gold, which is G-O-L-D, red? Well, I don't know. Why don't we go check on the overall sector itself? I believe last week it was Susanna in um, Canada who was looking at the GDX. And I believe we had a call yesterday on this as well. What the GDX is doing, not a big deal, that is pulled back off of its highs today. 
What it's doing so far, or what it has done, is tested Stevie's green line. That's at 2264. We're trading at 2267 right now. The question is, will that hold? What happens if it doesn't hold, if price closes underneath that? Well, that says you can go back and retest the low from a few days ago, although yesterday was a rising window. That's a gap to the upside. Let's move over here and take a look at the uh, charts, the three time frames for GDX out here, and identify from a profile standpoint, key levels of support. Well, the problem is it's trading into resistance which was the top of that box, 22.74. We're trading at 22.68. It's a bearish structured box. The sellers are like a dog pulling on my leg, don't want to let go out here. Uh, and so what we're looking for is a close above 22.74. We can't blame this on gold, the commodity itself. It's doing what it's supposed to do, uh, which is break above resistance levels out here. But we haven't seen the mining equities follow through. Does one know something that the other doesn't know I don't know the answer but at this stage here we've got one level of support that has held another that has failed being the top of that box out there so a close below 2264 only four pennies from where we're trading right now would suggest at least a pull back to 2243 perhaps even 2195 that's what Stevie sees on his charts when we take a look at the GDX now I think Peter did you want to look at some of the other equities which which equities did you want to look at out here but meanwhile let's put up gold ran uh, not we used to be ran gold bear gold out here and just see what its message is we said it was trading slightly higher it's got resistance at 1379 and 1410 uh, that being the top of the weekly and then the monthly profile out there prices in between this is bear gold in between the daily boxes the bottom being 1283 the top being 1454 so no real clues here other than price is closer to resistance than it is to support. Now, when we take a look at uh, Barrick Gold, the one nasty thing yesterday and today, if we want to call it nasty, is the mere fact that Stevie's green line is acting as resistance. 1367 is the number. So rejecting that, even though Rand Gold was slightly positive uh, for the uh, day, not good enough. Not good enough for me. If it's not good enough for me, it is not good enough for you. So we want to see 1367, a close above that. Only four pennies to the upside, but therefore very important pennies out there. Um, no disc gold after the indices. Okay, thanks, Peter. So you got an extra one out here which was just taking a look at the Barrick Gold. So I want to hear from you. It's uh, like not Uncle Sam, it's Uncle Steve. Uncle Stevie. Uh, and uh, so the easiest way to do this, give us a call at 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Just put the radio show question in the uh, subject heading, of course, in the Tiger's Den. We take any and every ping. So what else do we want to look at out here? What else do we want to look at as I look at my screens? Uh, um, Apple. Let's go look at Apple. Apple is up eight pennies right now. Let's see how it is doing. Let's go look at Apple and Disney. If we take a look at Apple, Apple uh, completed its uh, one to one. A to B equals CD. You remember we called that a long time ago and said Apple headed to 201.99. Uh, we were wrong. We were dead wrong there. It actually got up to 202.85. The question is, is the move over? It looks like a shooting star right now. But what's it going to look like at 4 o'clock? We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is $7,000. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% give you income of 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So if we take a look at Apple continuing taking a uh, look at it, uh, price hit the uh, first objective of the A to B equals CD pattern out there at 201.99. Whether today's candle turns out to be a shooting star or not, we won't know till the end of the uh, session. But even if it did, um, that alone would not be a signal that Apple is done moving higher. We would at least have to see a move down below uh, Stevie's green line. Now, that is at the 197 level out there, 197.52 to be exact. Price is moving higher. Moving with less relative energy. Today could be day number eight of the Tommy DeMarc setup nine count. So could it be a top as it completed that pattern? And a shooting star would say, uh, give you an indication that the answer would be yes. Now, the confirmation would come with a close below Stevie's green line, 197 and change out there. Profile-wise, um, the bottom or the top, I should say, of the daily box is 189.49 out there. So close below 197.51 would then say the top of that box would be tested, 189.49. If you take a look at Apple on a weekly and a monthly basis, prices above resistance, again, respectively, the tops of their profile levels. So they really don't, they're the intermediate and long term message out here for Apple uh, is back to uh, bullish as far as profiles are concerned out there. I mentioned something else we were going to look at. Oh, I said Disney, Disney. If we go take a look at uh, Disney, D-I-S is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Uh, this thing is moving higher. Looks like into a uh, line that I drew, but I don't recall drawing it. But let's go see what's at 117.18. We open up the daily chart, 117.18. Well, that makes sense. Takes us back to its all-time high. I apologize. It's 52-week high, which could be its all-time high, but it's certainly it's 52-week high, which occurred on November 9th, 2018. And the price level there was between 117.18 and 120.20. It represents the swing point, which had 16.8 million shares. Uh, we are trading right now with 12 million shares. It sounds like 
from a mass standpoint, we've been trading for what four hours, 9:30 to 1:30. Uh, four divided by 12, you got three times two and a half. You've got uh, about seven. So price is actually pushing into that swing point with volume. Yeah, that's just a straight line math. Don't take my word for it. My abacus is out of order, so I've got to rely upon simple math calculations like the one I just did live on the air. Uh, so price is pushing in towards, has not tested that swing point. At least I don't believe it. It went 17, 18, 117, 16. Uh, just camping below that swing point. You know, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi has taught you and me and the rest of the world that when you just lie below a swing point and you're doing it with some volume, expect it to explode to the upside out there. Now, exploding the upside, I don't mean explode, explode. I mean move to the upside. That would then say that the 12020 Speaking of 2020, 12020 really is the next target. The the 52-week high inside of uh, Disney DIS out there, simply because it's moving higher with volume. Now, in the case of Disney, uh, price is above the top of its monthly box, but not above the top of the weekly box. That's got the 11846. Looks like 11846 is its target, if not the 12020 level. And that is ticker symbol D I. Yes. Let me see if anybody has written in, because if you have, I certainly want to be able to get to that. Nothing is popping up on my screen uh, just yet. So let's go take a look at uh, something else. What is that something? Let's go take a look at, hey, excellent idea. I know somebody out there was saying, why aren't you looking at the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator? And the reason was because, well, I didn't know you wanted to look at it. But let's go do that. Let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator because what you were asking about was really, hey, is this trading above zero or below zero? Ooh, right now at 146 in the afternoon, it is below zero. That's at minus four point and change out there. Minus 491 was the latest flash on my screen. Now, I don't know where the day ends. If that advanced decline oscillator, which is the difference between the 39 and 19 period, in this case here it's a daily chart, daily uh, exponential moving average of the advanced decline information out there. Uh, that's what that is doing. And when it is above zero, it says that buyers are in control of the market. If uh, at the end of the trading session that's back above zero, today was nothing more than a test of support of that line. Now, if it closes below zero, what's the interpretation? The interpretation is stay tuned. We've got more, which means you'd have to have follow through to the downside, uh, lower close tomorrow below that line in order to say that, okay, it actually is the uh, sellers that are now in control of the New York Stock Exchange. And, uh, the uh, the uh, spot volatility index, that is below its 50-day. The 50-day number is 1526. We're trading at uh, 1391 out there. So, um, hey, at this stage, it says there's still plenty of liquidity in the market. So thanks for asking me to go take a look at the uh, NYSE advanced decline line out there. So what else do we want to uh, look at? Uh, the Dow in euros and US dollars. Okay, if you asked, here you go. Uh, this is the Dow. Here's what we know. Here's the interesting variance. Well, one, we know about the consolidation pattern. What we also know is that eventually the Dow price in dollars is gonna make a new all-time high. Now I know in looking at this chart, you would say out there, Come on, Steve-O, how can you say that looking at this? Well, here's one thing that we know. When the Dow does eventually make its top, it's not going to be where the euro makes a new all-time high in the Dow, which it has, and the Dow price in dollars has not. It doesn't work that way. At least it hasn't in the past. So we do know that we have coming at us doesn't mean that it's in the month of April or May or June or July or August or September because we're still in that consolidation at this stage here. The euro, the Dow in terms of euros is tested and rejected the consolidation high of 23,231. And the Dow's gotten really close to the top of its consolidation box, price in dollars. It's why you and I are watching the Dow. It's why you and I are watching the bottom of that daily profile because we want to, inquiring minds want to know. 
And if an inquiring mind wants to know, of course, I'm just kind of pausing here looking for the right button to hit. There we go. The key number to be watching is 26017. Now, we say 26017. I know I've covered this before, but, you know, repetition is the mother of all gifts out here. And uh, what we can see, what we know about the Dow Equity Futures contracts and each of the contracts out there is since the lows that were made, we have not seen a close below the bottom of a box. We've seen the bottoms of boxes tested. We saw that happen out here in February, February 8th to be exact. That was a test and rejection. We saw that occur once again, March the 8th. We saw that occur March the 11th. We almost saw that occur on March the 25th. And I guarantee each of those times, Mr. or Mrs. 666 have found it within themselves to send me an email. Yeah, and I always ask the question, why? Uh, price hasn't broken through support. So support right now is 26.017. Uh, pulling back to that level and holding, that becomes nothing more than a buy the dip opportunity. Closing below that says, okay, we may have something else. It could even be a change in trend. So that's what you and I want to be watching today, tomorrow, the next day. Does support get tested and does it hold? And I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I just know if it holds what it means. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
welcome, folks. Uh, Natalie writes in and asks, is now a good time to buy Lyft? So let's go take a look at Lyft. And, and it's a great question, uh, Nat. Um, and the answer is going to, well, first of all, we have limited data to apply to the chart from a technical standpoint. So let's just go with what we know. And uh, here's what we know. Let me see if I can pull this up. Um, I did an interview this morning um, for another uh, network. Let me see if I, s s I know I saved it, but what did I, where did I put, here we go. Here is, Natalie, here are the uh, top uh, nine IPOs for 2018. They're going to populate on my screen out here. Um, and so, and, and that includes Spotify, ticker uh, AXA Equitable Holdings, um, Pin Duo, Duo, uh, Lanco Animal Health, um, uh, Stone Company, ADT, and uh, so these these this, these charts. These are different time frames. Uh, typically, they're weekly charts out here, and uh, so these are IPOs. And this is not indifferent to almost every IPO you can go see. And the question is, uh, you know, was the time to get in on that IPO as things were changing from private hands to public hands and you've got all the emotion and all the stuff out there, all the hype, was that the time to buy? And if you look at these charts out here, uh, the clear answer is no. You typically don't have an IPO come out and it just continues to run to the upside. You've got to have sellers. You have to have sellers to find it who want to test the who want to test the backs of the bulls out there and try to figure out where there's actual support. So now the question is, well, where's it trading as we speak right now? And here's the information that you and I have, and that is that price is right now trading into its swing point low, and that is at 70.20. Uh, and as long as you are trading into that swing point, pretty good chance, Natalie, that price is going to go test 66.10. Now, if price busts through 66.10, you can wait for a long time. A long time says, oh, it won't give me that. The A to B equals CD pattern. I have to do it manually out there, I believe. Uh, it just says a lot lower price. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. Stay tuned. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. I'll be back with you on Wonderful Wednesday. Thanks for being here. Take care.